Hey ladies and gentlemen, Simon here with another episode of Hunter Hunter. Um, moving on from the last episode, um, I get a feeling there's going to be a hell of a lot of fallout in this episode from both Yuppie and Pooh finding the charred remains of the king. Um, because, and I said this in the last video, I said as soon as the royal guard figure the king is dead, there's nothing really holding them back. Um, I do believe the first thing they're going to try and do is to bring his corpse back to Pitu, uh, Pitu, Pito, sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet, so pronunciation is difficult without caffeine, um, to see if there's anything that she can do to try and revive him, heal him, you know, I don't think that even her nen ability would be able to bring back the dead, um, she of course has her own problems because she's stuck in a room with Gon, and, you know, Gon is very intense on fighting, especially now that Komagi has been healed and is awake. Um, the poor girl, though, she she doesn't have a clue what's going on. The last thing that she probably remembers is, you know, getting struck by the uh, the dragon missile and then nothing. So she doesn't know there's been an attack. She doesn't know where the king is. I mean, she doesn't even think of the king as the king. She thinks he's the dear leader. She thinks that he is the leader of their country. Um, she knows nothing about Chimera Ants or what's been going on. So I do feel slightly for her. Um... We've still got, you know, the other characters on the periphery to, to deal with. Um, you know, Killua showed back up in the last episode. Um, they're searching for, for Gon because, you know, well, they, they know where Gon was, but they don't know where he's going to be. Um, so things are definitely going to heat up. And, um, well, I say that, and of course they heated up when the king was killed in a nuclear blast. Um... Yeah, we kind of learned how those nuclear bombs were, like, miniature and they were distributed all along the world. And, and there was, like, it was showing us attacks on cities. And I was like, wow, that's that's really, really harsh. You know? That's, like, that's crazy um, that terrorists managed to get their hands on these devices and just blow up cities. Um, but... Why don't we jump into this episode? Before we do, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon super supporters. Frank Tremel, The Lone Detective, Karen Abel, Raccoon Shampoo, Florida Otaku, Ace, uh, Nick Walters, Trey Harbour, The Seven Deadly Sins, and our newest Patreon super supporter, Damon Smallwood. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so, um, yeah, kind of... I really had this horrible feeling the king was still going to be alive. You know, it's kind of like they've shown him to be more powerful than anyone or anything else that we've seen before. And I was thinking, mm, are they trying to show us that he's more powerful than a nuclear bomb? And, and you know, don't get me wrong. I know that he would have died had it not been for the Royal Guards finding him and um, giving him their essence to, like, heal him. And there were so many different things that were going through my mind in terms of, like, what is going to be the result of this. Um, the first thing that I was thinking is that, well, when he was talking about how he would never be able to eat anything again, I was thinking, holy shit, what if they've taken his taste for, you know, Nen users and, and humans away completely? And Because the Royal Guard are, like, a different breed. You know, they're, they're like, super, super duper rares. And so, if he didn't, if he wasn't satisfied by anything else, what if that meant that he was no longer interested in, you know, sort of subjugating humanity and, you know, cultivating them for food? Which I already know that plan was already on the wayside because he built this connection up with Komagi. Um, but I was thinking, well, what if this takes it one step further and makes it so that he doesn't even want to destroy, you know, the majority of humanity? And then I was thinking to myself, oh shit, when it was apparent that his memory loss came in, I was thinking, okay, well, what if this is a blank slate and he doesn't remember who he is and so he suddenly becomes, like, a good person who doesn't want to rule, you know? And then it was, like, um, when his memories were coming back and, like, you know, he's being reminded of different things and I was like, oh no, what if this has just, like, made him more powerful and he's forgotten Comagy now? And so he's just reverted back to being the king that wanted to kill everything and everyone. So there's there's so many different ways this could go, depending on how his memory is influenced over the next episode or, so, or, or two. You know, when he gets back and sees the people, what's that going to remind him of? 
Is he going to get to see Komagi? What's that going to remind him of? How is this experience going to have changed him? And I get the feeling now that the king... If Chairman Netro can't kill him, if a nuclear bomb can't kill him, then I don't think anyone can kill him. Not even Gon. Like, you know, I know Gon is supposed to be the one who always comes out on top and is, like, the most powerful. Um, but Chairman Netro right now... Well, not right now because he's dead. But when he was alive, Chairman Netro was more powerful than Gon. And if Chairman Netro can't kill the king, no one can. So it's upon the king to take down the king. I don't know. I mean, I was thinking as well, what if he just devours the royal guard? And that takes away the problem of the royal guard. Um, but other than that, this episode, the first half of this episode was so unbelievably weird like you had like grunting and groaning and blissful calls of sire it was just like you know it was evoking the wrong kind of images for someone who tends to have the mindset of a 12 year old when it comes to this kind of thing you know i just can't help but snigger and and make those kind of jokes when that happens and it was weird like you know the whole the whole idea of the royal guards allowing the king to cannibalize them to help recover like and then seeing them completely get off on that was weird and a little bit unsettling um you know so and I, at one point i was thinking the king to kill him you know when he was looking back at um up when he was like this little tiny teeny UP, I I was like, he's just going to slash right through him. He's going to be gone. And then he's going to do the same to Poof. He's gone. But um, I was thinking that, you know, because he was absorbing their essence, um, that they would be far weaker. Um, you know, certainly I think UP is weaker, but I guess because um, Poof had a lot of his segments still traveling there, that's what remains right now. And so that's what's left of him. Um, Peter is the only one who hasn't been affected, but at the same time, how is she going to react to those two having their essence inside the king and their status elevated? You know, she's kind of like the odd one out now. She doesn't have that because she didn't give her essence to the king. So maybe that'll come into play. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting stuff that could, could very well pop up in the next uh, few episodes. And as we do approach the end of this arc, I'm getting less and less certain as to how it's going to end. You know, I was thinking, we're just going to jump in there, straight battle, maybe someone will die, but we'll defeat the king, we'll defeat the royal guards, people will be saved, yay, we'll move on to the next arc. That's not how it's worked out. Like, you know, yes, we've had someone die. Some of the ants have been defeated. None of the royal guard have been defeated. The king hasn't been defeated. Um, how? Wh where do we go now? I don't know. But um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you for the next one.